Hello everyone, this is Dr. Young, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to how, how, how to just name organic molecules. So we're going to start with the simplest molecules, which are just alkanes, things that just have carbon, just have hydrogen, all single. So the first thing that you want to do is you need to memorize these parent names for the length of a carbon chain, right? So if it's one carbon long, it's a meth. If it's two, it's eth. If it's three, it's propyl, like propane. If it's four, it's bute, like butane. And then pent, hex, hept, oct, non, and dec. So for decane would be 10 carbons. Those are hands down the most common ones. You should learn those immediately. And then some of the like second most common would be the ones just near 10. So undecane, dodecane, tridecane, tetradecane. And it just continues to pentadecane, hexadecane, et cetera, all the way up to icosane, which is 20. Um, I'm not going to hold your responsibility for some of those hold you responsible for some of those larger ones, but definitely you should know, you should know these at least up to uh, 12. And what you do here right, is you just look at your uh, molecule and you just say, okay, well, if I look over here at this little guy, I see one, two, three, four. I see that it has four carbons. So I know, right, so four carbons. It's right, and in case you um, are having trouble seeing that or you don't remember this, right? I've got one, two, three, and four. So if you've got four carbons, the idea is that, oh, okay, this must be a butte something. So I know that this is called butte, and then I need the ending of this, this molecule. Is it butanol? Is it butylamine? Is it butanone? Is it what? And since in this case we're talking about alkanes, for alkanes, right, again, alkanes are just um, C and H pretty much, and then they're all sp3 hybridized, so they're all single bonds. If you have an alkane, the ending is ane, right? So if you have alkanes, they're all going to end in A, N, E. So I know this is butane, right? That's butane because it's an alkane. It's only carbons and hydrogens, and it has four carbons, hence the bute. So it's butane. So we combine these um, these sort of roots, the meth, eth, prop, bute, pent, et cetera, with the ending of whatever the type of functional group the molecule has. So for again, in these videos, we're just doing alkanes. So I can do the same thing right here. I have a parent chain. So here's my parent chain of, of carbons. I've got a chain that's that many long. And again, if I number this, it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now we're at eight carbons long. So this is an oct something. And again, it looks like it just has, um, it looks like it just has carbons and hydrogens and they're all sp3. So this would be octane, right? So the ane ending for the fact that it's a, an alkane. And then we'll just do one more here, right? Again, this is the only chain. Whoops. This is the only chain here. And so if I look at this, I've got one, two, uh, let me erase that. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I know this is a dec something, and again, it's an alkane, so decane. Right, so decane. So I've drawn here butane, octane, and decane. Those are the simplest, simplest examples you can see. Now we want to take a look at, well, what happens if there's stuff on there? What if instead of hydrogens, there's something substituting it, and we call those substituents? So let's take a look at what um, different substituents, how they affect affect the. So what you're going to want to do, right, is I've got some steps here. We'll go through them one by one. Um, right, find the parent chain, number the parent chain, starting with the end that gives the low substituent. Um, number and name the substituents, and then put them all together to have some big name. So let's just take this step at a time. So for the first one, we need to identify the parent chain, and the parent chain is always just going to be the longest carbon chain. So longest carbon chain. So you just got to figure out what the longest chain is. That's your parent. So in my case, it looks like I have um, I have a chain that can go uh, one, two, three, four. That's not very long, so that's only four. Or I have a chain that goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's going to be a longer uh, chain of carbon, so that's going to be my parent chain. So I've got my parent chain. Check. Oops, got my parent chain here. Now what I need to do is I need to number that parent chain because I need to say where this thing is coming off. I've got this substituent up here, right? This little, um, this little methyl group up here. I need to say where this guy, and let me highlight it so that you know what I'm talking about. I wanna know where this guy is coming off, what carbon number. 
So I need to number these carbons. And the way that you do that is you just try to give that substituent the lowest carbon number name. I just have to start with either my numbering over here on the left-hand side. All right, so I need to start at either the left-hand side or the right-hand side. I can't start in the middle of the chain to give it a 1 like that. I can't do that. I have to start um, over on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And I can just see with this molecule that it's going to be a lower number if I go left to right rather than right to left, right? Because if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that is going to give me a this group at number uh, 5 here. Or, let's go back, let's erase these that I drew. Or, <clears throat> I can go the other way and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now that puts that at carbon number three, which is a lower number. So I know that this is the right way. So I've, I've numbered the chain, made it, and I made it so that the first substituent has a lower number. So my numbering in red, for example, is more appropriate than my numbering in purple. I'll put the purple underneath just to emphasize. If I went from right to left, it would be number five. But if I go left to right, it's number three. So the red is right, the purple is wrong. So yes, no. And then I need to name the substituents, right? So I need to name and number those substituents. And for us, if you're a substituent, right, in this case, it's just a CH3, just a carbon and, and some hydrogens. <clears throat> what we're saying is that that's just one carbon. And I know the prefix for one carbon is meth right, from that previous slide, that if it's just one carbon, it's meth. If it's four carbons, it's bute. If it's seven carbons, it's hept. And for alkyl substituents, so for alkane, I'll put alkane-like substituents. Um, the ending is YL. So you just add YL to that. So instead of methane, it's methyl. So YL, it's a methyl group, is the idea. So that's a methyl group up there. And like I said, I want to say what the number is. So let me give myself some more space. The numbering, why, I just need to say what carbon it's coming off of. So in this case, it's coming off of carbon 3. So this is a 3-methyl, is the idea. So I've got a 3-methyl. That's what this group is. So now I've named and numbered my substituents. I've got a 3-methyl. And now I need to put the molecule, the whole molecule name together, and you put the whole molecule name together, right? I know that this is uh, seven carbons long, so it's a heptane, and then I have to say that there's also a methyl on the third carbon. And what you do is you just simply put the uh, substituent first always, so I know that this is going to be a three methyl. Let me do this in black. I know this molecule up here is going to be three methyl, and then I say the parent name, which is heptane, so three methyl, Heptane. And I put some notes down here as far as like using commas and dashes and stuff. So you just always use a, um, a comma between two numbers and you use a dash between a number and a letter. So like in this case, I did three methyl. So I put a dash in between the two of them because it was a three and then a letter. So three methyl. And also notice that there's no uh, space between the substituent and the parent. So just three methyl heptane. And the idea is that this name gives you just one possible, pro uh, one possible drawing, one possible molecule. That's the whole idea behind these this, this IUPAC naming system. So let's name a couple of other ones here, right? So I've got the second one. Again, I'm going to find my longest carbon chain. So I've got that. Again, it's a heptane. But now this time, my methyl group is not on carbon 3. It's on carbon 2, right? So I'm going to say that this is my carbon. Um, if I get the right drawing tool, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now this is a 2-methyl instead of a 3-methyl like up above. So now this is 2-methyl heptane. So they look a lot of light. All I did was I moved one methyl over one carbon, but I have two different isomers, right, of uh, C8H18. So I've got 3-methyl heptane and 2-methyl heptane. And the idea is that these are different molecules. They have different um, physical properties like boiling point and melting point, things like that. And let me do uh, another example here, which is a little more complicated, <clears throat> where I'm going to have to use a multiplier, right? So in this case, I said, oh, well, you might have to use multipliers if you have more than one of the same group, if you have two bromines or two methyls or two propyls or something like that. 
So let me show you, let me show you how that works, right? So if you have two of something, it's die. If you have three, it's tri. Four is petra, penta is five, hexa is six, hepta is seven, octa is eight, etc. Nana, deca, you just keep on going. So I gotta find my uh, longest parent. Oh, actually, well, I'll use a multiplier on a different one. This one's not gonna need a multiplier. I need to um, find my longest parent chain, which in this case is this. This is my longest parent. All right, so that's my longest parent. Um, it's not just going out to the left because I can actually get a slightly longer, um, slightly longer chain. And I need to decide where am I going to put my numbering. And again, you just want the first substituent to have the lowest number possible. So again, if I go one, uh, if I start down here and do one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or if I, again, I'll do a purple and go the other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. My lowest substituent for the purple, for if I go the purple route, is here on carbon number four, if I go the purple route. So that's a four if I go the purple route. If I go the red route, my lowest substituent is here, which is on carbon three. So three versus four, three is lower. So again, I know my red route is correct and my purple route is wrong. So I'm going to erase the purple numbering here so that we don't confuse ourselves. So I know I need to start off the left because it's going to give my first substituent a lower number. So it's going to give me a three instead of a four. So um, I'm going to follow the red numbers here. So it looks like I have a, we just said a three methyl. And it looks like I have at six, I have two carbons. And so two carbons is ethyl. So I've got a six ethyl. And my parent is nine carbons long, so that's a nonane. So I know the, the parent is going to be nonane, and I need to have an ethyl and a methyl there. So the question is, well, which one comes first? Do I say it's a six ethyl, three methyl, or do I say it's a three methyl, six ethyl? Like, do you go with the numbers of the alphabet? And the answer is that you go with the alphabet, right? So where did I put this? In alphabetical order. That's what you do. So in this case, right, since ethyl starts with E and methyl starts with M, ethyl goes first. So this is, whoops, um, this is going to be 6-ethyl, then 3-methyl, and then nonane. Right, again, I went alphabetical because E comes before M, I put E before M. That's how you name them. You ignore the numbers. No, don't, don't worry about the numbers. The numbers don't matter. It's just the alphabetical order of the substituents. That's what you're looking for. So here's three more examples. Um, at this point, I'd recommend kind of pausing. See if you can do these uh, by yourself, and then we'll go over them together pretty quickly. All right, so go ahead and pause. Take, take a chance. Okay, so we're going to take a look at these uh, real quick. Hopefully you had a chance to take a crack at your own so you can uh, bash your head against these for a little while. So look at my longest parent. Boom, I'm going to number this. Right again, I need the lowest number first. So actually my lowest number is going to be this way this time. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like I had another nonane. And then I've got my substituents. It looks like I've got some methyls and an ethyl. <clears throat> um, and then we just put the whole name together, right? So in this case, actually, let me write the names out so we can see them. So I've got a seven. Come on, buddy. I've got a seven ethyl. I've got a four methyl. I've got a two methyl. And I've got a nonane. So now I need to put this all together. And this brings up another point, right? On that previous slide, I talked about having to have multipliers. So in this case, I have two methyls. So instead of saying I have a 2-methyl and a 4-methyl, what I'm going to say is that I have a dimethyl. I have dimethyl. I have two methyls. So I don't need to say methyl over and over and over again. I can just say it once. So I have a dimethyl now, and I'll show you how that works. And if I have dimethyl, I need to say where both of those methyls are. Um, so ethyl still beats M, so I'm still going to do ethyl first. So it's going to be 7 ethyl, 
But now I'm going to say that this is a 2 comma 4 di methyl nonane, right? Got my parent here. I put in my di because again that means that there's two of the following things, so two methyls. And then I say that there's a 2 and a 4 because that's where those two methyls are. So even if not the same spot, even if both the methyls were at the 2 spot, you'd say 2, 2 dimethyl because that's where both of the methyls are. You always say where they are. If it was tetramethyl, you'd have four numbers there, right? Because tetra means four. You'd have to say that it's like a 2, 3, 3, 7, you know, uh, isocane or whatever it is. So you just always have the numbers for where those methyls are. So again, if you were working the other way around, if you had the name and you had to draw the molecule, you would know where to put those molecules, you know, where to put those substituents. For the next one here, we've got, um, let's see, what's my longest chain here? It looks like this is my longest chain. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, so six, six is the longest. And if I put my numbering, again, the number, you just have to have the lowest number first. So two is lower than three, so I'm going to go this direction. And then I need to look at my substituents. Looks like I got another methyl and an ethyl. We're going to add more substituents as we go along. I'm trying to keep it relatively simple right now. So 3, ethyl, 4, methyl, and sorry, I forgot this uh, 2 ethyl up here. Oh, sorry, 2 methyl. And then we put it all together to give us 3 ethyl, 2, 4, dimethyl, hexane. Right, because again, hex is six, the parent is six long. And then lastly, for this honker, looks like we got a long chain. We're just going to go straight across. Here's our parent. Here's our longest. Mm -hmm. Numbering-wise, looks like my lowest number is going to be, again, on the left-hand side. It's not always going to be like we saw above. So just be mindful of that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I know this is a um, dodecane. And then I've got a bunch of different substituents here. I've got this one, and that one, and that one, and that one. Again, we'll name these all separately. So it looks like I have a 5-propyl, because this is 1, 2, 3. So I've got a 5-propyl. I've got a 10-ethyl. I've got a 5-ethyl. Or sorry, a 4-ethyl. I can read my own handwriting here. So 4-ethyl. And I've got a 2 methyl. And again, when I put this all together, I just need to go in alphabetical order. That's all that, that's all that matters. Just, just put them in alphabetical order by the substituent name. So E comes before anything else, so the ethyls are first. So I've got a 4, 10, diethyl. And next, uh, P before M, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, M, N, O, P. So M is first. Don't be afraid of doing the alphabet. I see students do it all the time during tests. They're like, can you see? <laughs> yeah, so then M comes before P, so uh, 5 propyl, and this is 12 long, long, so dodecane. Dodecane. So that's your first introduction on how to, how to name just relatively simple hydrocarbons. In the next video, in part two here, we're going to start talking about well, what if there's tiebreakers? Like, what if you have two chains that are different? but they're both six carbons long, or they're both seven carbons long. Or what if uh, if you go come from the left or the right, the first substituent is on carbon number two. Like what if there's a tie if you have that? So that's what we're going to talk about in the next videos. Uh, study up on this, do some practice problems, watch the next video. Uh, happy studying.